All right. So before we go into our Christmas um, sermon series, um, I know there was a, a good portion of our church that didn't attend our worship night. Now, I shared some information about our church that is very integral, and uh, and as I was getting ready to jump into uh, this Christmas uh, ser- sermon series, my wife suggested, she said, I really feel like you need to share on Sunday morning what you shared on Sunday night. So, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to actually take a step backwards, say step backwards. We're going to go all the way back to 2013. Okay? So, so jump into your DeLorean, move over Marty McFly, tell the doc, hey, I got this. My, the plutonium is in, is in my DeLorean, and I'm going back to 2013. So in 2013, my wife and I uh, and our church at 2013, we're not that much younger, uh, yeah, so nine, yeah, wow, nine years? Dang, almost a decade. Well, I guess we were younger. <laughs> we did a anniversary service where we were celebrating seven years as a church. Now, the scripture tells us, uh, there's numerous things in the scripture that tells us not to forget because we are very forgetful. How many of us remember what we ate for breakfast two days ago? One person, two people, three people. Okay. Here we go. How many of you guys remember what was preached last Sunday? Okay, four or five people. Okay, so you so you guys are telling me. So look, so the majority of us forget stuff, right? Raise your hand if you say, I forget stuff a lot. Like, it just happens. So, <laughs> so in the scripture, check this out. God knew that we would forget stuff. And it says in Psalm 103, verse 2, it says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, forget not his benefits, because we can be forgetful. And in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 10, he said, After that a generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who neither knew the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. You have a whole generation of people who forgot. Right now in America, I believe we have a whole generation that forgot of the world wars that happened because pretty much that generation that was in World War II are either dead or right there on the cusp of of being dead. They had an experience of a a world uh, clash that we have never experienced. I mean, mean, our little wars that we've experienced was nothing like the world wars, okay? And the scripture talks, I mean, and there's going to be more wars, rumors of wars and all that other stuff, but it's just interesting that that generations forget. And so we forget. So it was really cool that I got to go back. I do all of my messages, all of my sermons, prayers, all that stuff. I put them in journals. I've got tons of these little things right here. That's why I got three of these. So during our anniversary service back in, (laughs) this is crazy. Check this out. (laughs) December 1st, 2013. That's crazy because it's December 4th. That's crazy. Almost I mean, pretty much nine years ago to the day, we did an anniversary service, and what I did was I walked our church through how God started Vision Church. And I want you guys to hear how it started, because many of you guys don't know, right? I mean, how many of us, the cool thing is, is, is we've got a lot of people that, how many of us were here at the very first beginning of this church plant when we planted this church? Look at this. We got so many people here. Thank you. Thank you for all of you. Can we give a round of applause? Thank you for all of your hard work and sacrifice and dedication. Okay, but let's see, it's nine plus seven years ago, we planted our first campus, which is in South Toledo on the, on the corner of South and Broadway. And that journey was crazy. So just so that you can see kind of the beginning of what happened with Josh and Joy, is that okay? Are you guys with me? Is that okay that I share this? I know we've got, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, let's do this. Okay. All right. I'm just going to read. Is that Okay. I'm just going to read. Joy and I started this journey as youth. And for those of you who came to our to our service, thank you for listening again. So if you're bored, take close your eyes. You can take a nap. Joy and I started this journey as youth pastors. This is how, this is how I wrote it. Nearly peons. <laughs> riding Pastor Keith's coattail, not knowing anyone or not even knowing how to do this thing. 
Vision Ministries was birthed, and at the time, remember, this is nine years ago, and I'm talking about a seven-year anniversary. It says Vision Ministries was birthed eight years ago. Vision Ministries is the name of what we named our church before we rebranded to Vision Church. So if you hear Vision Ministries, that's Vision Church. We just, we, we, you know, we, we scratched out Vision Ministries, named it church. We had too many people that thought we were Visions. We had too many people thought that we were an eye care center. So, anyways, we're not an eye care center. <laughs> Better let people know it's a church. Vision Ministries was birthed eight years ago. Joe and I started meeting in our house in our back room with like 20 people. That's how we started. We met on Tuesday nights, building relationships and stirring vision and passion as to what God was going to do. Almost a year in our house, we launched Saturday night services on August 26, 2006. So we started doing Sunday, Saturday night services, and then we would also, there was Sunday morning services happening at the church on South and Broadway with The Rock. They were actually called South Rock Ministries. Now they're The Rock. Okay. Uh, with a few months later, on November 26, we launched our first Sunday morning service. Solid Rock moved to Star Avenue on East Toledo, Oregon, and we rented the second and third floor for $3,000 a month. So we rented, kind of like what we're doing here now. Expenses were around $5,000 for that building at the time. Uh, to help offset their expensive, there was, a, there was a, a health ministry called Christian Health Ministries who they were in the basement. So the basement had like this free health clinic that was going on, and then we rented the second and third floor. And this, we did all this by faith. We started with 20 people. We had, on average, on Sunday morning, about 30 to 40 people with a $3,000 a month rent as 25-year-olds. So we're like, how in the heck, how do we raise $3,000 a month to rent this? We just did it by faith. We're just like, okay, God, you're doing this. Um, then we launched, uh, when we launched in November, Sod Rock moved. Okay, so they moved over to the east side, right? I just told you that. So then what happened was Joy and I, our full-time paid position as youth pastors changed. So basically they just, they, we no longer were being paid by them. So we actually had no income for three months. Jubilee, our second born, was ju she just became a part of our lives uh, in August. So we have two kids and three months without pay. Say the struggle is real. Anybody here ever get laid off before? But this was not a layoff. This was we were doing this by faith. So, so no salary, November, December, January, right around Christmas time. How's that work? Yet, supernaturally, all our bills were paid for, and we had like $900 in our savings account. Um, it's, right? I mean, it doesn't make no sense, right? You, have you ever heard if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense? Well, you know, God doesn't need dollars and cents to make sense. Like he... Right? He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Like, how many of you guys have ever had to actually had to ask your parent to get into the refrigerator in your house? Right? It's just provided for you. And that's how God does. He just provides for his kids. It's just crazy. Anyways, so, Pastor Josh Poussant's in the dwelling place during that season. They sponsored our family and gave us a Christmas food box and Christmas uh, gift cards and sponsored our kids for that Christmas. So, we had a Christmas for our kids. Isn't that crazy? So we're like, we're stepping out in faith. We're young. We're like 20 years old. We're just, you know, I mean, that's the cool thing about being in your 20s. You can just, you just do stuff. You have no, you know, awareness of consequence. You're just like, we're just going to do this. We're going to do it by faith. We're going to do all this other stuff. And we just like, okay. So we did all this. We were working through uh, the Assembly of God church planning pipeline. And, and so when we were going through that, uh, Solid Rock, um, they, were, they were wanting to sell, uh, or excuse me, Solid Rock was selling the Prouty building. So, so to give you a picture of, of kind of, so Solid Rock Ministries, they owned, they owned uh, the South Toledo campus. They owned another church that's right next door to, to where we live. They owned our house. And so when they made the move out to Oregon, they, just, they, so, they decided to sell that other church that they owned that we actually had a youth center in. Uh, they, were, they decided to sell the parsonage that we were living in. They gave us first dibs to do that. And then eventually they were gonna they were selling the main campus and we were gonna have first bids on that as well. So we were working through the pipeline, uh, church planning jargon. Okay, we had to go through all of this strategy and all of this learning and all of these classes and all this stuff. So we're doing all of that, 
So they're selling these properties. They're giving us first dibs to buy the parsonage, but there were other people that were interested in buying our house as well. Um, so, so we, 3000 a month rent in the hood with 30 people, three months, no pay, two kids, and they're selling all their properties. <laughs> Say by faith. See, now, 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 like, logically, you're, you're like, that is a bad situation, right? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. But when you step out in faith, how many times we read the scriptures, we see people step out. 300 facing 10,000 doesn't make any sense. But ask Gideon, it worked, right? So we're, so we're going through all of that. Then in uh, February, we were fully appointed as church planters. And, um, and so what they did was they actually gave us back pay for three months of having no income. So they gave us a check for $9,000 for the three months that we had no pay. And we actually, because of all of our bills were taken care of and because we were being provided for, we took that $9,000 and we put it in the church bank account as a seed for Vision Church. Like God's taking care of all of our needs. We're taking this money and it's going to begin, you know, there was obviously you know, barely any money. And so we're just like, we're going to put this as a seed into this church. We just believe that this is what God is doing. So our pastoral team consisted of just a few people. It was Joy, it was myself, uh, two other ladies, Dawn, who was our kids pastor, Heather, who was our, our worship leader. And, uh, and so we, would, we got like desks and computers uh, that were donated to us. We had people that were donating things to us. Um, we had a Tuesday night prayer time that was super awesome. We launched Sunday night youth ministry, which growed and flourished. We, like I said, we were fresh youth pastors. We still felt called to youth, so we launched a, a, a a youth ministry on Sunday nights. Um, and so we just had all of these crazy things happening. So, so we had also, while we're doing all this, you know, Sod Rock, they're, you know, they moved their church. They also moved all their stuff. Also, during that time, we had another church donate us 90 chairs, and they were burnt orange. Say ugly. I mean, they were like straight from the 70s. I mean, burnt, I mean, ugly burnt orange, not like nice burnt orange. We had a connection with MTS seating, and we got the upholstery for all of those chairs for $300. And Francis, if you don't know who Francis is, okay, he, he's incredible. He, he uh, is at South Sudo right now. Him and I reupholstered all of those chairs. He, he, he brought a sewing machine from his house. We bought staple guns, and we reupholstered all of those chairs. I mean, when you start off small, you know you, gotta, you do what you got to do to make it work. We also, so when we moved in there too, we also had uh, a community of people who knew people. We had, uh, we had uh, the, one of the ladies who went to our church, her uh, brother owned a paint company. So we painted the whole church. How many of us know that paint costs a lot of money? We, it, took us, it took us like a month to paint, we, we just wanted that building to just do its best to look good and to represent God well. And so we, we, we had people that were in there painting till like one and two o'clock in the morning uh, and just painting, you know, I mean, three stories, if you've never seen our South Little campus, I mean, it's humongous. Uh, painting, donating paint, donating time, donating energy. When you're in the will of God, God gives you favor. He gives you resources. So I'm, so... <laughs> so all of this stuff, he's you know, donating all of these things, giving all of these things. We tapped into a fund which gave us sound equipment and video equipment. See, like all of this stuff, all this stuff, all, uh, well, at our South Seattle campus, we didn't have anything. And that stuff is super expensive, but they have church planning grants and stuff that you can, you can try to apply for. Well, we applied, and they, they funded us, and we got sound equipment and video equipment and laptops, and all these other things. So then in 2008, Solid Rock, they, they were selling that property. Uh, they were also approached by Cherry Street Ministry, which is a multi-million dollar ministry, and they were interested in buying the building, yet we were still in it. We were renting. Uh, so we had a meeting with like 30 pastors in our city. Like I said, we are like these like nobodies at the time, and there's like 30 other pastors in the city and we met with them in our building, and they all concluded, they were like, there needs to be a church in this community. What is going on in this ministry needs to continue. You guys are doing a great job uh, ministering to this community. We have to keep this here. You guys need to buy this building. 
And they were all in agreement. They were like, we'll do whatever it takes. We're, 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 we'll get behind you. So, so what we did was um, we were giving the green light to start itinerating. And so what itinerating is, is we began to go around churches all across our, our uh, state of Ohio, and we began to s- just share kind of like a missionary. We would, they would give us five minutes or ten minutes or whatever, and we would share what we're doing in the urban context and how we needed outside to su- support to continue what was going on. So we had uh, connections in favor uh, across the, our, our state, and also there was also a church up in Michigan uh, that we were able to go to. And, and then they began to support us monthly where we began to have income from outside support. Uh, we were also in negotiations at that time with Cedar Creek, and they actually rented out our kitchen and dining hall for $1,500 a month. That's how Vision Kitchen was started. Vision Kitchen wasn't started by Josh and Joy. Vision Kitchen was started by Cedar Creek. So anybody that has anything bad to say about, about churches or Cedar Creek or what, they're some of the most kingdom-minded people I've ever met. Uh, so they were like, we, they, this is what they said. They said, we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to provide the food. We're going to provide uh, the, we're going to provide the, the volunteers. You provide the space. And then they named it Vision Kitchen. They could have named it Cedar Creek Kitchen, but they didn't. They named it Vision Kitchen. So, and then if you don't know anything now, now and that was only, and we only did that like one day a week. Now we're serving three days a week. Okay, and emergency food boxes and blah 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 blah. Right? If you went to our, if you want to know all the stuff we do, go to our go to our YouTube page. We've got our banquet video. You can see all the stuff we did through the year. We've done lots of stuff. Um, so they they believed in us. They believed in the in the ministry that we were doing right there on South and Broadway, right there in the heart of the city. And they were and they uh, we built a connection with them. Um, I was just amazed at the tremendous favor that we had been given by ministry leaders, by pastors, and by churches, especially because we were like nobodies. Um, so Solid Rock, they needed to sell their property. They were going through their own transitions. Um, we decided that we were going to do a fundraising banquet that year. It was our first time doing it, right? My, my wife worked her tail off for that. And so, 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 so check this out. 2008. Joy gives birth to Jordan, okay? We have four churches in the area with four sale signs on in front of their property. The recession hit, and we're planning a fundraising banquet. Say, but God. Seriously, I remember there were four churches with four sale signs right in our community. Churches were closing down, selling, selling the properties. And we're fundraising to buy our property. How interesting is that? The recession hit. Our country was was going through, you know, difficulty. Uh, we were fundraising, uh, something that was also, uh, that was integral for Joy and I. Our pastors, Pastor Keith and Shannon, they moved to Florida. They were like spiritual mentors to us. So that was like emotionally, that was challenging for us through that time. Um, so Pastor Carlos, he was the pastor of Solid Rock at the time. They decided instead of uh, selling the building, because they initially said they were going to sell us that building for 250000 that's what they originally were going to sell it for. It was worth like three hundred seventy-five thousand. Um, that they were only going to sell it to us for one hundred fifty-five thousand. Who does that? Who takes a hundred thousand dollars off? But that's what him and the board. That's what they felt like. They wanted. They needed. They wanted to have a, a chunk of money to pay off their existing mortgage of what they owed on that building, and they wanted to have enough money to put into their new building. That's really all they wanted. So and that and so. So they had, so 155,000 so that so we needed to put the 25% down anybody here have a mortgage anybody here have a mortgage how many of you guys hate I hate mortgages right I mean so anyways <laughs> you guys with me I know this is a long story but this all has a purpose so we needed to put 25 down uh, to be approved for a loan because we don't have credit right like 20 some years old. We don't even, you know, we were barely building credit for ourselves, let alone have commercial credit for commercial property and commercial loans. So we did our banquet. At that banquet, we raised $30,000, 2008 during the recession. Come on. And then on top of that, 
Pastor Scott Estep, who was the pastor of Dayspring in Bowling Green at the time, he said he believed in the mission and the vision that God had given Joy and I. And so they were taking their annual missions budget and they were going to give it to Vision Church. And that was $20,000. So we raised $55,000 in 2008 as a little 26, 27-year-old peon in the middle of a recession for a down payment for that campus. So we took that $55,000, we, we, we got a loan, uh, so we only owed $102,000 or blah, blah, blah. And so I'm sharing all of this to share you this faith journey because this is the thing. Because through all of that, and then God brought us great leaders at the time. He brought us Earl and Renee in 2008. He brought us like Steve and Angel and brought us Jill and all these people who were called to uh, that location and what we were doing. So, so Vision Church began miraculously, right? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I'm like, how, how does that happen? God, because God will provide provision for the vision. He'll provide. Like if you are in alignment with God, if you are his son and you are his daughter and you're saying yes to him and, and you're following the will of the Lord for your life, the voice of the Lord on your life, he will make incredible ways. I mean, it just doesn't, right, it doesn't make any sense. And so this is at this time, listen to this, at the time, this is what I said, only seven years in, okay? Hundreds of thousands of dollars given to keep this ministry going. Thousands of people blessed by backpacks and Christmas presents. One year we gave a thousand Easter bags away. Thousands of lives changed and touched by Vision Ministry since 2006. Prayers lifted. Too numerous to count were the Gowden encounters, uh, people being touched, people with testimonies, baptisms, all of this stuff. And this was just seven-year-old church. Now we've been doing ministry for 15 or 16 years. So 16 years now. So now and then in 2017... We planted this campus, so which was completely out of the right, out of the box for Joy and I. We're like, we've done urban ministry our entire life, born and raised in the city, right? Thought we're going to live in the city and die in the city, right? Just not getting shot, but by old age, right? <laughs> and And never considered... This all thing. So so in, in 2016, God started doing this stirring inside of Joy and I. We're like, something feels weird. Like, like it's, it's like weird. Like, have you ever had a time in your life where you feel like something's different? You know, something is, you know, sometimes they call that a midlife crisis. Well, we weren't having a midlife crisis, okay? Because, like, midlife crises are usually, like, boats and motorcycles and all that fun stuff. But there was something inside of us that was like, God is shifting, like he's doing something, like, right? If, you, if, you're, a, if you're a son or, or daughter of God, there are seasons in your life. And we felt like God was doing, a, it's like something we were just, so we were kind of praying into, okay, God, what are you doing? We were thinking maybe God was going to call us to leave. We are like, maybe he's calling us to leave. Maybe we're going to go start a church in, in Hawaii, yes. Hawaii, yes. Yep, barefoot. We call it Seaside Assembly. Everybody can come, right? Yep. Right after the preaching, the volleyball will start and surfing. <laughs> right? They need Jesus in Hawaii. <laughs> or the Bahamas for Jesus, right? So, so we didn't know what was going on. And then God started doing this stirring in us that that you know, like about starting another another church. But we've always thought we were going to start a campus in the city. Never on our radar was the thought of, of any community outside the city limits. And then uh, we were praying. We're like, I don't know, for some reason, God just kept highlighting Waterville, 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 Waterville. Like, what is, what's in Waterville? Like, it's what Waterville, it's weird. But little did I know, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, all, I mean, we can sit here for hours. I can sit here and talk about the stuff that happened in the background. We had people that, you know, that live in Waterville that, that were praying for water. I mean, so, so like, Almost like God was like connecting our heart and our giftings with prayers that were being sent up to the Lord for this. So anyways, so, so, I'm, so I'm not just saying this as in, because every time I just want to say this, everything that, that we have done 
we have done, okay? Everything that's ever happened in Vision Church over on South and Broadway wasn't just because Josh and Joy said yes to God. It's because we had amazing people that came alongside us and said, we're willing to sacrifice right alongside you and did the work and put in the time and energy and resources and believed God and poured their heart and their soul into hurting people in the corner of South and Broadway. And in the same context, when we said, we're going we're gonna to start a church in Waterville, who's with us? We had incredible people who were courageous enough to say, I don't know who you are, but let's do it. Right? We had our very first meeting in the Waterville Event Center, and, and we didn't know hardly anybody in there. We're like, what is going on here? And we just shared our heart and our vision. And do you know there was about 40 people in that meeting, and about 30 of them were crazy enough to stick, stick with us through the whole thing. And then we moved from the school to Waterville Event Center to 2000, uh, what was it, 2018, 2019, yeah, 2000, right. The, yeah, the, the fall of 2019, we moved into this facility. And so when we, I mean, it, was, it just happened. I mean, every, I mean, it's just crazy. I'm going to just go ahead and share it. So I'm going to let you guys know. So in 2019, Joy and I were going through a really hard time. We thought we were going to quit. We did we were ready to throw in the towel. We're like, we're done with all this, right? It's hard. seriously, seriously. Let me, let me, let, let, let's peel back the ministry veil. It's hard. People are stubborn, right? Seriously. I mean, I mean, think of how stubborn your child is, right? Imagine having hundreds of them. <laughs> and the kid has to do what you tell him to do, right? Y'all don't have to listen to us. <laughs> it's hard, right? There are, it's such, this discouraging and frustrating. And so there are, if you do not know this, if you don't know statistics, it's like 2,000 pastors a month quit the ministry. Uh, around 2,000. Because it's exhausting, because it's tiring. We don't get paid enough for this. <laughs> Seriously, like, think about this. Like, people like counselors, here, just, just give you perspective. People like counselors get paid a lot of money, and it stays professional. Right? Listen, right? They do what we do, but they get paid a lot of money, and they keep it professional. Where in pastoral ministry, it's not just professional. You're sharing your life with people, and it's not about money. And if you know any pastor that has uh, any church that's around 100, they're not making any money. Right? Mega churches, those are really, you know, even though you see a lot of those, those are more of a phenomenon. Because on average, if you look statistically in the United States of America, 85% of churches are about 100 or less. 85%. So that gives you only, there's only 15% of churches in America that are over 100. So it's a hard, it's a hard job. I mean, we know pastors that, that have quit the ministry that, you know, I mean, it's just tough. So we were in that time. I'm saying all this to say, let you go. we had a spell. We were questioning. Seriously, we were like, is this what you're supposed to do? We were, um, we were incredibly discouraged. And we took that whole year, and we prayed. We, we're not the kind that says, okay, we're discouraged. Let's throw in the towel, right? Josh ain't built like that. Joy's not built like that. We're like, we're going to die in the ground here with, with snot and tears, <laughs> like whatever it takes. But we were like, the way the things were moving, we're like, maybe God is moving us. Because he can do that, right? Like Josh and Joy, we're not the center of the universe. Like maybe God was going to sh sift us. Like maybe move us and put somebody else in who can do a better job. That's what I thought. I thought maybe God, there's somebody who can do a better job than what we're doing. Bring them. Let them do it. So we went through that whole year, and we didn't let anybody know. We kept preaching. We kept loving on people. We kept doing it. And then at the end of that year of 2019, we were discouraged. We were tired. We were exhausted. We were ready to quit. Our board said, y'all need to take a few weeks off. So we did. We took a few weeks off. We went and visited churches. We didn't talk to any of y'all. And, uh, and we just wanted to just, okay, God, what do you want to do? And at that time, during that time when we took a break, is when we got a call from Aunt Margaret. There's this property available on Noward Road. This is the amount that they want for it. This is the amount of money that we can put down right now for, for the first month of rent and for a deposit. Isn't that crazy? And for us, it was exhausting, right? We were, I mean, 
Come on, John. Right, this is my road dog right here. I mean, this guy was with the front thick and thin, right? Uh, Uncle Mark, come on. I mean, our road dogs, I mean, we were setting down and, and tear, we're uh, setting up and tearing down every Sunday, only a short period of time of being able to do that. On top of that, while we're tearing down, we had people coming in like they were <laughs> with, because the event center was, uh, we were renting it from a certain time, but then when we were done, we had people coming in for baby showers and, and wedding showers and birthday parties. So we're like packing up and they're bringing in their food. I'm like, hey, let's just stick around and eat with these guys now. But no. So this property, now, so when we, so this was like a breath of fresh air because it was like we don't have to sit up and tear down. We can linger. We can build relationships. We've got space because we had a real crazy small space in that event center, but we, we were making it work. So when we came into this property, this is what's so interesting. We actually did what, what we called a dedication service. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, 2019, right? Because it's, I've got it right here. I should have looked at my notes. 929-19 did a dedication service. So what we did was we, you know, we had a service, and, and we talked about, like, how God devoted certain things for himself and how in the Old Testament what Solomon did was he built an incredible temple and he dedicated it to the Lord and he prayed. He said, Lord, you know, when people come into this place and when they pray, let your eyes be upon them. When they, when they make sacrifices, Lord, when they've sinned, when, when they've turned their hearts from you, let you look down at this place and hear their prayers. That was the kind of stuff that, that was being said during their dedication. Well, we did the same thing. We moved into this place, and we said, this is, what, this is what some of our prayers were. We were like, Lord, let this be holy ground. Let this be a place where you inhabit. Let it be a place where people experience the presence of God and where their life is changed forever. We, we kind of prayed real similar prayers on this building. Not so interesting. And then, then you know, multiple different things, and we had people praying and, and, and stuff. So it's crazy because we didn't do that for any of the other places we were meeting in, but when we got this spot, we dedicated it to the Lord. We're like, Lord, use this. And um, so I'm saying all of this to come to our current events. So my wife and I uh, have been praying about, you know, is this, is this the place where we've been leasing this and we've been uh, talking to our amazing landlord about, you know, we've asked her every year when we resign our lease, you know, are you ever interested in selling this property? Kind of been our thoughts. So about three or four weeks ago, we get a phone call, and Sarah ta is talking with Joy, and she says that her and her husband are interested in selling this property. And they want to sell this property in about 10 months to a year. So I get this phone call, and my wife is like, you'll never believe what I just got this phone call. So we're all, you know, so we're talking. And uh, so I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So we kind of kept it under wraps. We, we shared it with a few different people that, that she's interested in selling it. And so, so we have a meeting with Sarah, and she's like, you know what? She's like, I want to, she said, she said, I would love, because she owns this, this whole property is like 11 or 12 acres. So the house right there in the corner is on about five acres. This building is on about six acres. And then there's multiple buildings. I don't know you notice there's like a few different buildings on this property. So this whole property is about 11 or 12 acres with the, with the quarry and all that stuff. And so she's like, I, she said, I would love for you and your family to live in this house. She's like, I would love to sell this property to a church. That's what she said. So she said, so in about 10 months to a year, she's ready. So, so we were like, okay, so she was getting the appraisal. We wanted to get a, an asking price. So we knew what she wanted for that. Uh, she took Joy and I on a tour of the property, showed us where the property lines were, showed us inside all the buildings in her house, all this other stuff. And uh, so, you know, we, we've been looking at properties. I mean, we were looking, we were looking at, there was a property that was on Dutch Road that was for sale for a while. They wanted uh, like 950000 for it. Um, and it was only like two acres. And, um, and then we were looking at, I mean, and then there, I mean, there's there been multiple things. There's like, there was a, a Dollar General that was for sale. There was a church that was for sale. And I was like, this church is for sale, this church is for sale. And I'm like, but it has an elevator. I despise elevators. That's a whole other story in itself. 
we put a, at least $100,000 into our elevator on South Campus. So, so I hate elevators. <laughs> hate them. I mean, they, they have a job and a purpose, you know, and take you up and down. But they're, they, they, so for, for Joy and I, we've always said, well, we want a piece of property that's all, you know, one flat, <laughs> right? No elevators, right? I mean, I put, you know, down with elevators, we can start a whole movement. Uh, escalators, only escalators, I don't know. Steps, only steps. Uh, so, so, so for us, we're like, we, you know, we want something that's flat. We just, if I can, if we can get, move away from that headache, that money drain. So I said, there's a reason why they built a brand new building, a brand new church, and they're selling that old one. It's because of that elevator. <laughs> probably not, but you know, but I mean, it's probably one of the reasons. <laughs> so, so we have this amazing opportunity that's in front of us. Where, where she wants to give us first dibs to purchase this property. So, a few things. Number one is a decision like this isn't something that Josh and Joy or Josh and Joy and the board make on our own. We, we've set up our bylaws. We've set up our governance so that we don't just make decisions like that. Like Josh and Joy can't just say, we're buying property and this, that, and the other, and then golden toilets and stuff. That's what happens when you have people who mess around with nonprofits and screw up everything and they get audited and go to jail. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. Right. I mean, I mean, jo right, right. Josh and Joy, right. We live a life of integrity. We live, we live a life of transparency. If you want to know what money we do, annual meetings, let you know all the money that comes in and where it goes to. We have a, uh, we have a licensed CPA who sits on our board, who, who helps us basically like does like monthly stuff, make sure all of our books and everything are reconciled. Because, because this is resources. We have to be good stewards. So we've been raising money. We started our, in March, our art campaign, which means God's building something. We don't know what it is, and we don't know how it's going to work. We called it ARC, <laughs> right? Nobody knew what that was. They saw Noah. They're like, what is that? It's like, uh-huh, I'm just building it, <laughs> right? They, never, they didn't know what a ship was. He was building a ship. <laughs> so we said, you know what? We believe God wants to give us property in Waterville. We don't know where it is. We don't know what it looks like. And so we're going to start setting some money aside. So since March, right now in that account, there's over $60,000. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? I can think of like way back in the day, like like when we just had our South Slido campus, I can think of way back in the day when, man, we were barely scraping. Like we would barely have any money in the bank. I mean, we're just like, you know how it is living paycheck to paycheck, right? Anybody here ever struggle? If you've never struggled, God bless you. What's the secret? We're doing a seminar. You teach us all your lessons. And so, so we have people that have sacrificed already to say, I believe that God wants to take vision and plant it in Waterville. So, so we have about $60,000 that we've saved already. So this is the thing. And so as a church, we've, we, we would have to agree to say, and we would have to do, we would have to do a, a, an annual meeting or, or a special, special business meeting. Sorry, got to get the right terms. We would have to do a special business meeting. I know, I, I know all this stuff, right? You don't know about all this stuff. We have to do a special business meeting, and, th and this, the business would be, that, that we as a, as a church and a body of believers believe this is the next step for Vision Church, for the Vision Church Waterville is to purchase this property. And so we would have to take a vote. We'd have to have a, 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 a meeting and, and we would have to say, yes, this is it. So a few things. Number one is my prayer has been, okay, God, is this it? This is this is this it? Is this the spot? It right because it, even though it feels right, right? I mean, there's a lot of times when things feel right, but they're not, right? <laughs> and so, I don't want to base things on feeling. So we've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been just listening, saying, God, is this the spot? So I'm like, I've just been waiting for the thumbs up. Like God, give us a thumbs up because the thumbs up, then I'm ready. We'll do this. So we've been so we've been praying and fasting and believing. And, and then we're waiting. I was waiting on an asking price because I'm like, okay, so if she asks, if she wants this amount, we got to raise this amount of money. So 
Last night, so I didn't even have, so it's funny that I was preparing to share this. I didn't even have the, the amount yet until yesterday evening. Last night, got a phone call from Sarah, and we talked to her. And so, so she gave us an asking price. So, so what she's asking for, for all of this property is, what is that amount? <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I put, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm under like, like pressure right now, and I'm, I don't want to shoot out the wrong number. Hold on, I texted it to you because I, okay. The asking price She's asking is $878,000 for all of this property. So just to give you so just to give you just to give you some some ideas. Okay? Again, remember what I said that little piece of property on Dutch Road? They wanted overnight it was like $950,000 for it. Right? We were so interested in that. I even brought a person from our district to come and take a look at that property. Okay? Solid Rock when they purchased their building and it was on 8 acres, they spent $550,000 on it, and it didn't have a house. So this property plus the house plus the court, like I said, it's like 11, uh, 11 and a half acres, almost 12 acres. She wants, like I said, $880,000. So what, so what that puts, the what position, if we say yes, this is what we want. The position that puts us in is to put down 25%, we would need to raise for a down payment, do the math all, y'all who know how to do the math, about $220,000. Who said that? Did he say it right off the cuff? 200, 220000 is what we would need raised if we, want, if we say this is it, yes, we're doing this, and we want to put down 25%. So do 220000 minus 60000 Makes it sound a lot better, doesn't it? A hundred. And sixty thousand dollars. So if we say yes, we want this property. Yes, this is where God has us. We've got ten months to a year to raise a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Because this is the thing, friends. Check this out. This is just to let y'all know, in ten months to a year, Vision Waterville is changing. We're either going to buy this property, or she's going to sell it to someone else. And she, and she, 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 she says she's giving us the first option to buy. She has at least two other people that are interested that would be interested in this property. So we're getting the first and and she cut four percent off of what the appraisal for the property was. So she cut it down too. So we as a church, we got a lot to pray. So we're talking about the praying that's happening Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yes, please pray with us, fast with us, believe we're like, okay, because if because this, like I said, this campus is changing. In, in 10 months to a year, either because we're going to be buying this property or we're going to be packing up and moving. So now's the time where you ask questions. So any questions? Everybody's like, <gasps> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we had, so somebody, yeah, somebody uh, was inter was asking about like the space, you know, the space. So there is actually a whole extra uh, um, part of this building that we don't even use um, because the owner still uses it as a garage. And if you notice when you walked into our foyer slash kids area, it is a foyer slash kids area because we are limited in space in that we only have this part of the space. So if we actually purchase this property, we could take our kids ministry and we could actually throw up some drywall and stuff and actually have turned the, the garage into a kid's area where it has its own dedicated kid's area. Look at, see, if you know all, how spacious that is and then this middle, well, the space for that is the exact same. So we'd have a spacious area for the kids. They would be over there by the bathrooms where they're not walking through here when they got to use the restroom, right? So they could, <laughs> right? You don't have kids walking through. So they would have their own dedicated kid's area, which is safe for them. And then we would obviously turn our kids' area into a foyer and stuff where people can would set up tables and blah, blah, blah. We also could take uh, half of that foyer room. We could block that off and then create a whole other room. So we can have two rooms for, like, nursery and preschool or classes or whatever. So we can utilize and maximize this space on a greater capacity. On top of, there is a huge, this is, was an old barn, okay, actually above us is an area that's opened, and it's larger than this. It has 
what are they called, vaulted ceilings? It's like 12-foot ceilings across this whole building. So, I mean, we could put, we could put, you know, a youth center up there. We could do a game center. I mean, we could take the kids, move them upstairs. I mean, there's just, there's, there's so much, there'd be opportunity. So, right, I mean, it'd just be like, it'd be just like South Toledo. Send all the kids upstairs. <laughs> so, as a church, or as a, yeah, yeah, go, yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah, so, 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 in, so in part of, yeah, so in part of, uh, she said, she said, if we purchase the property, she said she would give us, she has like a gator and a zero turn, and she's got different things. She said as part of the selling, she would sell us all of the equipment needed to maintain this property as well. So I'm going to, you're going to see me out there on that zero turn. I'm going to be out there cutting that grass. You're going to see my 19-year-old out there on that zero turn. You're going to see Joy, Pastor Joy. I want to see Pastor Joy cut some grass. <laughs> So, I mean, so the church owned the property, it would, be, it would be our responsibility at least to start to maintain it. And then if we grew and we had all this other stuff, I mean, we could pay for, you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot about our intern. That's right. That's right. Not volunteered, voluntold, y'all. <laughs> oh. Any other uh, questions? Yeah, more questions. Questions? Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she actually has a she has a big huge uh, like book of the history of this property and stuff. There used to be there used to be a landing strip that would go across here and that building right there. You can't see I can see it right there, right out the window right there. That building in the middle right there used to sell they had ticket sales and they would sell tickets for for airplane rides that used to happen. That's crazy airplane rides. I would have went on an airplane ride if I knew. That sounds fun. So, so, so all together, so if we wanted to put, if we wanted to put 25% down, which is about what you put down for a loan, right? If we wanted to put 25% down, which is what we would want to do, we would need to, we need to put down $220,000. Now this is, this is why I told you this whole story of the beginning of, of what happened with Josh and Joy. There is no way in my mind at 26 years old, I would have ever thought I would have raised $55,000 for a down payment for that building on South and Broadway. Never. And, I'm not, and so now as a 42-year-old, I know God can raise $220,000. I mean, I've seen him do it. So, so, so to me, the amount, I'm not worried about that. I mean, just, I mean, he, he will, just like the, I mean, he brings people in. So, but we got to say, yes is what we want. This is our, this is what we're going to start doing. We're going to start uh, building towards that. But then again, we've already got 60, so it doesn't look like 220, it looks like 160. So were you going to say 160 divided by 12? Like, what does that look like? So, so even breaking it down. So if we, so if we start fundraising and we raise an additional 13,000 a month, we could, we would be setting aside enough to say, boom, bada bing. So, yeah. So we have to. So she said she wants to know by the end of February. And, and if we're interested, we have to actually give her, like, an official letter saying, like, yes, we're interested. Yeah, we're pursuing this property. So we've got about two months. Yeah. Pastor Joe, you can come on up here, baby. I had me talked. I forgot I was going to say. <laughs> so this, this is huge. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we get all of your guys' input. Um, if this is a move that we want to make. We have to pray as it depends on God and work as it depends on us. Thirteen thousand, a little more than that a month. Like that's like giving, like that with the size church that we have. That's still going to be a miracle. Although we know God does miracles and He's done it before, 
we have more wisdom, more faith than we did when we were 25. However, because we have more wisdom, we also realize it's going to take work. So uh, we're willing, if this is the Lord's will, if this is God saying yes, we're willing to do whatever it takes um, to make it make it happen for the kingdom. However, we do know that we're going to have to put together, you know, some fundraising, put together, like we have a meeting with one of our district people um, December the 14th. Uh, so we we have to, we'll have to put together, if you are interested and you're saying, you feel a yes in your spirit and you're saying, this is what I want to do, I am going to put together a committee that's going to be committed to fundraising and making sure we do things the right way because we don't want to go into this. This is a big step. Um, now, we're, I am going to put together a committee, whether it's this property or another property, because like we said, 10 months to a year, we, we're going we're to be doing something. But um, if, if, if our church especially, if those who attend this campus feel a yes in their spirit that this is our next move, then we're, we're going to work, and we're going we're gonna to do what it takes to make it happen. So let me know if you're interested in being a part of that because we can, you know, I would love to connect with you. So that's all I want to say. True, that's true. I mean, we, yeah, we don't want to move to rent again. You're absolutely right. Um, I mean, even renting, I mean, we've been here for two years, and I think on average, so we, so, and, you know, we're blessing Sarah, and we're blessing their family. You know, what, what is our, what is our annual, or what is our monthly uh, rent we're paying? I think it's like 26000 no, right? 2600 26000 oh my gosh. Yeah, we're, I know, my, my gosh, my, I was screwing up on worship, I'm screwing up on numbers, it's okay. So we, so we on average are spending about 2600 a month on rent. So do the math, that times 12, we're giving away. So I know, who could think of the math? 26, 26 times 12. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know anybody who flies and pilots? Well, we will install a new airstrip. <laughs> so, so over the you know over the past two years, right? We've been here two years, almost three years. You know, it's been it's been about thirty one, thirty two thousand. We've you know we've handed over to to which is fine. You know, I mean that's what you do with rent and stuff like that. But that's money we could have invested in the property. It could have been money we invested in the kingdom. So, any other questions? All right. I've realized that the Lord uses babies as as a as a, a clock. As time is time to time to wrap it up. I've seen that in my life many times. So, we don't have any questions, any more comments, concerns. Again, I know this was a different service than usual. Thank you, all of the Vermilia family, for coming. Um, it's an honor to be able to be you know join you with that. Um, and we're just, like I said, we're, we got stuff to pray in, pray about for the next few days. And we will continue our Christmas sermon series next Sunday. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this great opportunity that we have in front of us. And, Lord, I shared all of these stories just to share of the faithfulness of God. Not the faithfulness of Josh and Joy. The faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of all of the amazing, courageous people that you have placed and you have, have uh, blessed with whom Vision Church is, God, people that have sacrificed and given, the people that have poured their heart and their soul into both our South Toledo campus and now our Waterville campus. And Lord, our heart is, God, we want to do whatever you would like for us to do. And Lord, you know our heart's desire. God, our, our desire is, Lord, we would love to have a place of our own. So Lord, we just ask, Lord, uh, God, if this opportunity before us is the right fit, then Lord, we thank you for making it an absolute affirmative uh, in the hearts and the lives of those that call vision our home. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for your favor. We think you've already given us favor. And uh, Lord, we thank you that Lord, that when God, as we would step forward and do our part in fundraise, Lord, we know that your favor is going to be upon us. And I pray that you would bless every person that came here and gave us their Sunday morning, Lord, to be a part of the service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. 
May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, God bless you. Thanks for joining with us. Have an absolute amazing rest of your Sunday.